Hello Colors, welcome back to Viva Basta and welcome to another interesting episode where we are going to discuss on some interesting updates. We are going to begin with Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo as Barca reportedly no longer 100% certain about signing the Portuguese duo permanently. We are going to discuss more on that as we progress. Secondly, talking about Oreo Romeo as La Liga club Girona, the director in the club is not ruling out resigning the Barcelona summer arrival. So guys, as we get right into it in much detail, please do ensure to subscribe, turn on the post bell notification to always stay notified whenever I post a new video. Consider liking the video and please watch it right up to the very end. The duo of the Joao's, that is the Cancelo and Felix, brought tremendous hopes at FC Barcelona. Both players arrived on loan this summer with the reputation of being talented but inconsistent players, struggling to maintain a high level consistently. But when they show up, they are near unstoppable, with Felix having a point to prove due to being frozen out at Atletico. Dan and Cancelo wanting to prove his doubters wrong after some internal tensions at Manchester City, their early games garnered plenty of praise out of the blocks, so much so that the club started considering the possibility of signing both of them permanently next summer and had reportedly begun crunching the numbers to, so, to do so. However, these positive sentiments are now waning and Barcelona are no longer fully sure that they want to finalize their signings, according to Javi Miguel. In his initial months at Barcelona, Joao Cancelo has especially displayed both flashes of brilliance and moments of inconsistency. While he is fast, skilled and a real attacker or attacking asset, he also tends to be chaotic, unpredictable, and at times self-centered. He has left gaps at the back on numerous occasions, and his tendency to venture into unmarked territory often disrupts the team's balance. Of course, um, aside from that, there have been games where his attacking impact has also been invisible. Joao Felix, who initially faced criticism within the club, was a personal choice of Juan Laporta, who had been closely following the Portuguese star from his days at Atletico Madrid for years and was adamant about bringing him to Barcelona. Joao Felix had also professed his affection for Barcelona in an interview which worsened his situation at Atletico following an unsuccessful loan stint at Chelsea. After a promising start, contributing with assists and goals at Barcelona, Felix secured his place in the starting lineup, but primarily operating from the left wing. However, after this bright beginning, he has slowly regressed to a point where he struggles to make a significant impact in front of goal. He hasn't scored in 10 games, and has not quite generated enough chances for his teammates either. It is still too early to pass final judgment on these two players, but Miguel states that those anticipating Barcelona making a significant investment to retain them this summer may be disappointed. A left winger and a defensive midfielder are seemingly the priority for Barcelona, when they next decide to spend some money. Of course, the two draws have been have been good majority of the time since they came, but honestly, in the past few weeks, I have seen a lot of inconsistency from those players. And the talk of maybe signing them, trying all the formula that Barca can to ensure that they stay permanently, we aren't hearing that again. You know, we aren't hearing that again. Um, but personally, for me, Barca should still try if if they see the chance to incorporate these two players into permanent Barca players. They should, 
They should. It shouldn't be a matter of because it's just about three weeks of inconsistency for those two players. Then automatically, they shouldn't be signed permanently. They still remain valuable assets in the team. And of course, because if we look at things critically now, nearly all our players are not playing well. Nearly all of them. So it's not like just the two draws, which means Xavi and his tactics and whatever, I don't know. There's something wrong. And I don't know if the manager and his staff have identified what problem it is. Because failure to do so, then we aren't going anywhere. We aren't. Because uh, if, unless you find out what the problem is and what needs to be arranged and adjusted for the team to compete better, then we can't say we have any guarantee of success. So for me, Joao Cancelo and Joao Felix should be there. Barca should still look for the means to sign them permanently because they still remain top class players. Then on to the final story of discussion. Aurea Romeo was one of the surprise signings from Barcelona during the summer transfer window. After missing out on a host of top targets, Romeo was sort of a last resort option for the Catalans in their bid to find a replacement for the departing Sergio Busquets. Formerly of La Masia, Barcelona paid around 3.5 million euros for Romeo, who joined on the back of an excellent spell at Girona. Even though it has also only been a few months since he signed, murmurs about a possible return to Girona have already started doing the rounds. In a recent interview, Girona's sporting director Kike Cassel left the door open for Aurea Romeo to return to the club in the near future, he said. Personally, I want that 100%. Romeo gave us magical things. A lot of players told me that he taught them how to compete. Romeo had played for Girona for only a year between 2022 to 2023, but during that period, he racked up 34 competitive appearances becoming a midfield general for the Catalans. Talking about Romeo's potential return, Carcel said, it is not easy because he has a contract with Barcelona, but I don't see it as unlikely. Given Carcel's recent comments, it is perhaps fair to evaluate Oriol Romeo's performances after returning to Barcelona this summer. With 821 minutes of action, Romeo is the 10th most used Barca player by Xavi and Anders this season. However, that is largely due to the club's lack of options in the defensive midfield position. Coupled with Frankie de Jong's unfortunate injury, Romeo has performed decently at times while helping Barca fill out a crucial spot in the starting eleven. His experience in particular has been a key factor. The Spaniard, though, is the slowest player in the Barca squad. Nevertheless, Romeo is here to stay, at least for now, with Barca not in a position to go after another defensive midfielder in the market. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.